Boston sports teams have brought home an impressive number of titles over the years. But by the 1980s, the city held a title it didn't want, Dirtiest Harbor in America. For almost 100 years, starting in the 1870s, this town pumped rivers of filth into the same bay that once sheltered the Puritans. I want to see how Boston finally cleaned up the mess with the second largest waste treatment plant in the U.S. Boston has had its problems keeping its waterways clean. For decades, sewage, industrial wastewater, and urban runoff have poured into the Charles River here and over in Boston Harbor. But Bostonians never back down from a good fight. And the struggle to save their harbor was one fight they couldn't afford to lose. The harbor has been the heart of the city since the beginning. And today, waterfront property is worth billions. But not too long ago, this area was lined with dead fisheries and derelict buildings. If tourists wound up here, they would probably made a major wrong turn. That all changed when Boston built a sewage treatment plant that's so state of the art, it even generates its own clean power, worth millions. I'm heading to Deer Island Wastewater Treatment Plant to see how the city turns its shame into a showpiece. Fred Lasky is executive director of the agency that runs this amazing complex. Great to be out here. This is yeah. water that used to, I wouldn't want to stand here before, right? Yeah, this was the dirtiest harbor in the country, and now it's the cleanest. So it's a great environmental cleanup story. It took a federal court order to force the city to spend the mega bucks needed to remedy hundreds of years of harbor abuse in just a decade. This is it. This is a $4 billion sewer treatment plant. It's one of the most sophisticated in the country. Each day, wastewater from 2 million people, about 350 million gallons, journeys to the plant. Starting with the first flush, it takes 12 hours for that waste to travel through the massive pipes into the plant for processing. It ends its journey as disinfected water piped far out to the sea. And every ounce of it enters through a terminal chamber like this. Where's the flow happening? It's coming in. Coming this way. Oh, it comes right in here. Yeah. This is a dangerous work if you don't take the appropriate precautions. The air itself. The air, the sewer gas can build up. It can be deadly. And I'm going to ask uh, Chuck Evans, who's one of our area supervisors. OK. He's got a high-tech gadget there that'll read the gases and make sure that the, it's appropriate for us to go in there. You're OK. So we can go in? Yes. So that's the flow down there that's coming from Boston. This is a gravity system. It's just flowing in from all the toilets and showers and storm drains all around town. I mean, this is major solid material, if you know what I'm saying. This is the sort of crud Boston's been dumping into the harbor since before the famous tea party. Butchers in the 1600s had to be banned from throwing pig heads and meat scraps in the water. And it got much worse over the centuries as the city pumped wastewater and industrial toxins into the bay. By the 1930s, it was a dead zone, and all the clams in the city's world-famous chowder had to be purified in treatment plants. The Deer Island facility removes all the bad stuff, from the tiniest germs to large floating junk. Put some gloves on. Uh, this is raw sewage, and, and there are some health risks involved. After being up to my knees in this stuff, this is nothing. So this mechanism here is doing what? These are the mechanical strings take the debris out. Why don't you take a look at it? All righty. Oh, there you go. Isn't that lovely? So this system is all the rakes that are circulated in. See, here comes one now. These feet actually dip down into that flow that's coming in, the raw sewage, and pulls out all the unmentionables that come through this stream from the people in Boston. And it's a whole collection of items, personal hygiene items, you know, condoms, um, you know, our, our guys refer to con condoms as rainbow trout. They come in all colors. <laughs> After the rakes harvest the unmentionables, they end up here. This is a couple of days' worth. Boy, that is a perfect illustration of what this is really all about, isn't it? Absolutely. Keeping this... out of that out of the natural water. Right, and this is just the first phase of the treatment. And these floatables aren't even the nastiest ingredient in the wastewater. That honor belongs to the brownish goo called sludge. To get rid of that, you need some serious futuristic hardware. So it looks like we're in the 22nd century. Yeah, like a science fiction movie, doesn't it? What are these shapes? These are egg digesters. They are full of sludge. And they are uh, having bacteria digest or eat the sludge. 
sounds like we're just mocking human digestion. These are big stomachs, basically. Right. Exactly. We're stepping up on the top of the egg right here. So inside, below us here, 14 stories of sludge, essentially. Yep, 3 million gallons of sludge. And the bacteria is eating it, reducing the volume by a third. And then the, the byproduct is methane gas. So the breakthrough here is that you actually create your own energy. Yes. Oh. Oh, that's, that's pretty. That is very pretty. That's the stuff. Black gold. That's the stuff. You're looking at that horribly foul uh, liquid is what used to pump right into Boston Harbor, what used to kill the whole ecosystem in there. Yep. Uh, you ready for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> There's an empty. A little SOF. <laughs> After chlorine has killed the remaining pathogens, another chemical kills the chlorine, and the 12-hour odyssey is complete. And here's the happy ending. Out here in Massachusetts Bay, a pipe runs from here out there, introducing this now clean, environmentally safe water into that ecosystem. So there you go. That's how they cleaned up the famously filthy Boston Harbor. Both sea life and humans have come back to the harbor now, thanks to a high-tech solution. Impressive, but I'm really ready for a breath of fresh air. Yeah! And coming up later, the last thing standing in what once were towns, uncovering the shocking sacrifice that saved the city. I've seen how Boston pulled off the amazing feat of cleaning up its harbor. All it took was $4 billion worth of innovative engineering, a waste treatment plant that turns filth into fuel and gets backup power from an ancient technology with a 21st century twist. One of the cool things here at the Deer Island plant is that they self-generate a lot of their power. They use the methane from the digesters. They have, they have water power, which turns a turbine. And look, this. They use the windmills. Look at that thing, man. Forget Chicago. Boston is the windiest major city in America. Touched or hit head on by hurricanes every four years on average. Now the complex's 190 foot tall dual turbines are turning this age old menace into a major asset. The giant spinning blades are way too dangerous for the general public. But energy expert Kristen Patnode can get me up close and personal with these spinning monsters. Standing underneath of this is pretty awesome. How, how big are these rotors? One particular blade is 77 feet long. So it's almost 150 feet across, That's basically. Right. It is. New Englanders have been using windmills since colonial times to grind corn and pump water. Today, windmills are producing electricity, and I want to see how it's done. Not to mention, the view of the bay from a 17-story behemoth has got to be incredible. So normally, you don't let the public in here? No. People don't get inside. Even staff at the treatment plant don't go in oh, there. Oh, really? Before I start the ascent, I get rigged out by Rob Descharnay, turbine expert, and my own personal Sherpa. I think you should go with this big dog. One for this hand, and it goes right here. Oh. What's this for? Well, let's say you're falling. You can just grab onto those and hook onto a ladder. How quick are you on the draw? Yeah, you need practice. This is entirely more complicated than I thought it would be. Yes, here we go. All right, seriously, is this dangerous? We're OK, right? You don't, no comment. Great. To prevent the rotor blowing me off the roof, Bob is turning the blades away from the wind so they shut down. Oh, I hear it. It's going down right now. Yep. So all those blades are now slowing down. So we're off. It's 190 feet straight up. Clunk. I just found out why you wear a hard hat. Cool. Got it. Yeah, I got it. Clear. As I get higher up, I start to feel queasy like this whole massive structure is swaying, because it is. 
and I can feel this entire windmill moving in the wind. At last, I emerge from the darkness and climb into the generator room. All right, I'm up. Hey, it is pretty tight up here. These rotors are turned by the wind. There's a turn to turn the shaft that runs into this gearbox. This is all connected to this part back here. Main the shaft. Main shaft connected to the generator, and that's generator technology, creating electricity that is sent down to the Right next to this thing. So this is the nose, that's the cone. That's the nose. That's yeah. out of it. And the wind is continuing to push this around, yeah. despite the fact that this has been turned off. So is that a hatch? Can I pop out there? That is a hatch, yes. Let me go up there. So I get up there, and the first thing I'm doing is clipping on the left and right on these things. So that's, yeah. that's why you were testing me down there. Yes. So right now, before you exit at all, you want to make sure you get hooked up. Oh. I should get this off and blow off. Okay. All right, here goes nothing. Yeah! You can really see all of Boston. This is definitely the best perspective you can ever get on this. So you get the idea. All this power is coming in the form of wind, captured by the old-fashioned technology of a windmill. Old-fashioned, but very up-to-date. But look behind me, this enormous plant, this, the Deer Island Wastewater Treatment Plant, a system that used to produce foul pollution that went right out into the harbor. Now, largely a green operation right next to a cleaned-up Boston Harbor. That's a pretty good deal. The low-tech windmill has been reborn as a high-tech source of green energy, turning fierce ocean gales into a windfall for Boston. Now I want to see how this city tamed another kind of threat, the man-made variety. That's next. <laughs>